Okay, hello everyone. Let's continue. Need Sally. Or, none of you can walk backwards. You all must move forward. Uh, the one with money needs to offer money. The one without money need to offer physical strength. At the time you took refuge, you said to rely and follow the teaching. So now you can't be, oh, I run to the east. He runs to the west, then I run to the south. Nobody runs. Now we are. Uh, the living quarters are not together. In the future, we will have more places. We can live together to protect the Dharma of this way place together. <laughs> this can be explained as you made a vow in the past to follow me. Now, even if you wanted to not count, it doesn't work that way. So, you want to run, you can run. So, you want to run away. None of you is allowed to run away. To run away is to run to hell. <laughs> to run away is to run to the hungry ghosts. To run away is to run to the animals. So, none of you can run. So, if you run away from, the, from these three good realms and run away in front of the triple jewels, then for sure you will run to the three evil realms. So each of you should think about it. None of you can run. So what happened is when uh, Master uh, Shenhua started teaching, he had a lot of uh, Westerner followers. Uh, it's only because uh, the other uh, Buddhists uh, have uh, their own temples ready. And uh, Master Shenhua is unknown. And therefore, uh, the real, the, uh, the traditional Buddhists, the existing Buddhists would not come to his temple. So these uh, new ones come. So he had to teach them everything like taking refuge and so forth. Okay. Um, and, uh, and so part of uh, taking refuge is to learn uh, from Buddhism to avoid right here. This is what reminds us. The first advantage of taking refuge is that you learn about the three evil paths of the hells, the hungry ghosts, 
and the animal realms. Um, those are the places you want to stay away from uh, because uh, typically in our daily lives, uh, in uh, this higher world, this impure world, we have, we have these habit energies of uh, greed, anger, and stupidity. And those are the, uh, the um, driving forces for us to create offenses, to fall to the three lower paths, what's called three evil paths. And uh, it's, it's, uh, if you learn Buddhism, if you, uh, uh, if you adhere by the Buddhist uh, teachings, uh, you have a better chance to, f to rise to the three good paths of uh, human realm, God's realm, and Asuras. All right? So that's what it's about. Uh, people in the world uh, don't realize that. You know, they they uh, they don't realize that uh, once you have you we lose this uh, human body it's so easy for any of us to fall to our three lower realms because the kind of offenses we create every day through greed anger and stupidity and that's very very dangerous uh, every day we create more offenses to make us fall then good karma to make us ascend to a higher realm, which is a fact, okay? Uh, and and uh, the non-Buddhist religions uh, don't stress that enough. So in Buddhism, this is the first thing that, this is the first advantages that we're supposed to have, and we're supposed to learn to avoid these things. We have a fear that uh, it's not fun to fall to the lower realms. It's a lot more suffering than you think. Okay, and not only a lot more suffering, but it's very difficult to get out. You'll be there for many, many lifetimes. Whereas uh, this human body here will lose it that easily. But once you fall to the lower three realms, uh, you'll be stuck there for a long, long time and endure so much suffering. And that is not some, something to be taken lightly. Okay. Now, <coughs> 你也要用口头上来和他辩论一下。Outside, there are people sabotaging this way place. You also need to debate with them verbally. 说善言不变,变言不善,我要和人一变,那不就不善了吗? Master, Master said, good words do not dispute. The disputatious words are not good. So, if I debate with others, isn't, isn't this not good? Uh, can we change it to make it more English? <laughs> good words do not dispute. Uh, uh, words don't dispute. Mm. So we might want to say that good words uh, uh, are not, what's the adge adjective for? Uh, are not what? Quarrelsome? Do. Are not. I mean, this, this, this is adjective, not, not uh, verb. Hmm? Yes, pink. Should should words be speech? Good speech does not. Uh, what do you say? Quarrel. Yeah, good speech. Good speech. Uh, do not dispute. It, it, the speech cannot. After speech, you cannot have a, a verb. It, it should be adjective. Okay. So good speech. 
are not quarrelsome. Good speech is not for quarreling. Uh, and quarrelsome speech uh, is not good. Something like that. Okay? Uh, but it needs some work. <laughs> it's okay. This is a very fast translation. Typically, it takes a long, long time. So you know the gist of it. <laughs> yeah. Yes, argumentative. I suggest um, divisive. Uh, not divisive. You were too political. I'm sorry. Mm. <laughs> You're so obsessed with this <laughs> politics here. Uh, it's uh, argumentative. Uh, good speech is not argumentative. Argumentative speech is not good. Okay? Beneficial speech is not argumentative. Argumentative speech is not beneficial. Even the Korean is struggling with this. <laughs> okay? Yeah. Someone changes it so that we don't, uh, we don't forget you know, for future references. Okay. Your debate is not, ah, uh, is not. What is this? It is not, oh. I exhaustively look for your mistakes, and you also point out my mistakes. But isn't that constructive, though? Especially in a uh, in a uh, work environment, should we exhaustively uh, discuss the pros and cons? He's not referring to a workplace. What he's referring to is people coming to the workplace, and all they do is discuss others. Faults. That's what he's referring to. It's perfectly okay in in a work environment to be direct and and honest and blunt and discuss those things. It's a good thing. Uh, if ego is a crush, too bad. Uh, you have to do better next time. But for uh, uh, for you to come to a way place and keep on uh, what they call uh, gossiping gossip about, people love to gossip about the bad things because there's, there aren't many good things to gossip about. Okay? In our temple, people, uh, people uh, have more good things to gossip about. Every day they come and say, you know, Master said this person increased, improved already. What level we think this person is? <laughs> so it's a mystery that's uh, still uns unsolved. Uh, there's plenty of good mysteries for you to gossip about, okay? Uh, because your rate of progress is scary. I'm running out of things to teach you at the rate you're going. I remember I was uh, at Lu Mountain Temple. It used to be so much safer. I would walk, look at you. Ah, uh, no change since the last uh, uh, half of the year. <laughs> No matter how hard you work, no change. <laughs> now it's like people are changing by the, you know, the week, by the uh, half month, month, and so on. You know, it's scary. Something happened, we're not sure what, but, uh, uh, but uh, that's why you have so many things to gossip, good things to gossip about, not bad things. Continue. Ah, uh, 
说我们不好，我们就自己承认我们不好，实际上是不对的啊，他们是有的。I also pick on your mistakes. It is not like that. He said that we are not good. We just admit that we are not good and say that we are wrong. Um, this Dao Chang, there, the people, uh, have no wisdom. So, rather than your wisdom is so great, it is so great. Ah, they have this. People of our way place don't have much wisdom, so we do not have as much wisdom as you. So what he's referring to earlier when he said people are sabotaging our way place outside, he's probably referring to these people who are actually bad mouthing him, slandering his dharma, that it's not the proper dharma at all. He's unknown. He's a.、Um, um, He、uh, doesn't belong to any Buddhist association, uh, so uh, so he initially he had very little support. No one knew about him.、Uh, yes, and there there wasn't any good things to talk about his way places about him in particular. Only the bad things that his disciples brought to the temple, you know the. The, the weeds and, and the、uh, tempers and so forth.、Uh, mm. 要跟你消息，和他讲一种客气的话，不要和他呃硬硬邦邦的那么辩论，不是。In the future, we will all learn from you. Say this type of courteous words to him. Don't be stiff with him. Don't debate head on. Right, and this is why I like to remind you、uh, of this point.、Uh, in particular,、uh, I'm sorry, it may sound sexist. Maybe you should skip this comment, <laughs>、uh, especially you married women. Is it okay to talk like that? Married women, you come to the temple and you learn, and and you go home. The one thing you have to learn is to be softer, not to be harder. You know what I mean? Because you go to come to the temple and you learn stuff and 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 and. and And、uh, and you open your eyes and your wisdom.、Uh, it is、uh, in the interest of learning how to yield, not to butt heads with your husband or with your wives. As a matter of fact, those of you who are、uh, very respectful of your women, okay? What's so funny? The Vietnamese understand immediately what I meant when men being respectful of the women.、Uh, in Vietnamese, called "sợ vợ," which means you're scared of your wife. <laughs> Then you go home, and all of a sudden, you have this. The spine becomes stronger. <laughs> you don't kowtow to your wives anymore. Uh, when you before that you used to kowtow to your wives, it's not a good thing. Remember, when you come to the temple, you go home should be the same person as before. Not、uh, if anything you should learn about at all is not to fight and to yield more and more and more. Okay, and that's why that's why I occasionally have to. I find myself. I have to remind people: you guys don't seem to get it. That you know, we also French Wei Yang, French Wei Yang, is that we always kiss up the women. Okay, <laughs> it's just being smart. You want peace in a family. A happy family depends on a happy woman. Now the Vietnamese don't laugh anymore. 
<laughs> it's not Vietnamese enough for them. He said, no. Um, the point is that this is why my ma maybe that's one of the reasons why Master Shen Wan, the first thing he said, don't fight. Don't come here and learn and go home and fight with your spouses. She'd be more harmonious. Okay? And, 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 uh, Oh, and and uh, don't don't try to tell 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 your spouses you learned so much and you, you know, and, and so forth. No, you you should be more uh, more uh, invisible, more uh, more uh, yielding. In my humble opinion, okay, more courteous, more French we are. Okay, well, that's being smart. Uh, you can't. I noticed that. Many, many, especially uh, women, come to the temple and they're very smart. And they pick it up just like that, very fast. And then they go home, they started, you know, butting heads with their spouses. And it's not a healthy relationship, you know. Initially, these women will butt heads with their spouses. And eventually, they'll, as the wisdom grows, they learn to well, stop doing that. Okay, and you, no one has anything to add. No one says, oh yeah, uh, it's me too, me three. No? We don't fight. The more we know, the less we fight. The more we know, the wiser we are, the more we yield. It's okay. Uh, the one thing that I learned uh, that helped me survive for a while at uh, Master Shiwa's temples is that uh, a bodhisattva came to me. He says, you know, uh, one thing you have to learn about these people who don't like you. And I said, I know understand how people cannot like me. I'm arrogant, I'm conceited, I'm an SOB. Uh, uh, I don't think much of them, I show in my face and in, in in, in, in the way I look at them. Uh, uh, I outshine them in everything I do. I don't see why they can't like me. But the Bodhisattva came to me and said, you know, it's okay. <laughs> don't, 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 don't. Uh, 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 one thing you have to learn. He didn't, he didn't tell me about, you know, Mahayana, anything. He said something very simple, because I stay anywhere. It won't be long before a show, it will, will become clear that I'm smarter than they are, I'm faster than they are, I'm much harder working than they are in everything I do, okay? Uh, so everything I did. So, so, uh, so eventually, uh, just like, it, just like uh, before, they all... The, the temple ganged up on me. <laughs> the whole temple. I went to Long Beach in my ministry. And the whole temple didn't like me. It, it was baffling. <laughs> Couldn't understand why it's so stupid I was. It's not about being right. There's no wisdom in being right. Being right, it was worldly. You think you better be you more right and, and uh, you smarter. That's worldly. So a Bodhisattva told me, taught me, he says, you know, look, now they're plotting against you. Now they're going back to headquarters and badmouth you and everything. Uh, now they're looking, they can't wait to to give you a heart, <laughs> excuse me, COVID-19 strain, South Africa. Uh, 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 it's deadly, I heard. Uh, okay, now they're plotting, you know, to oust you and all those things. And, and uh, so I said, but, but they, they, yeah. so what do you do? He says, embrace them. What are you afraid of? Accept them as who they are. You know, he taught me something that's interesting. He says, he says, if you know full well 
they come close to you to find a way to harm you, to attack you. Okay? What do you do? I said, I said, no. Go ahead. Make my day, punk. No, no. <laughs> you know, he says, I said, this is what I would do. I said, he said, no, 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 no. no. You lower your arms and let them. Give you your best shot. That's what I learned. Okay? What are you afraid of? <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, now you're all doomed. <laughs> Even this woman is immune to the COVID-19. Go figure. That's impossible. <laughs> you should be scared. I remember the first, the, you know, the, the last year when she came, when I first came more frequently, he said, oh, you see a mask in front of her face. <laughs> uh, now, haven't been sick yet? Huh? Uh, Cantonese woman? <laughs> Amazing, you guys are scary. Anyway, so uh, don't be afraid. Embrace them. Don't fight. Embrace it. Embrace it. Okay? Don't butt heads. And then that it sort of it sort of influenced my thinking because of that. Later, I learned more about how the Chinese master, like Master Xuanzang, went to India to pick up the Buddha Sutras, a tremendous feat, you know, uh, immortalized by so many movies, uh, Journeys to the West, you know, and, that, uh, and novels. Uh, but. But uh, so uh, it, is, it is that he went to India and then he learned, he spent like a, a four years learning Sanskrit and then a few more years learning about the Buddhist uh, sutras and then he started debating the Indian masters. He out debated them all. And that's when, back then already, I said, oh, really? So you learn from the Indian and then you out debated them. Why? So you learn from them, you prove you're superior. Why? Okay? Uh, so I was never impressed with Sun Zhang debating the other Indian masters. Is that how you show your gratitude? Huh? Oh, yeah. I don't know if it's a Chinese thing or not, but you know. Uh, yes, uh, orange. Master, I think it's the Indian tradition where the different schools debate with each other. It's, um, uh, it's a decree from the king for them to uh, debate their knowledge on the uh, sutra studies. Maybe so, so yeah. It, and, and, and he and, actually was appointed by the head, uh, by his master, to represent the school to, the, to do the debate. So it's not about himself. That uh, yeah, uh, and I, I noticed that in the Tibetan uh, monasteries as well. They would gather and they would debate each other, like one on one, and then until the winner you know, gets moved on like a chess match, and then chess competition, and then, the, and then finally there's a winner somewhere. Uh, so he's, you're recognized as the number one debater of the monastery or something. To me, it's silly. It's really so silly, yeah. Yeah. because that's what I have against the, uh, the, uh, the uh, training by debate, okay? Why? What's wrong with debating? Huh? This, this is why I was turned off by the Indian tradition very, very quickly. That's why, maybe that's one of the reasons I never really looked into the uh, Indian uh, uh, Buddhism for some reason, okay? Maybe this is it. I, I never could 
was I was never turned on by the uh, the Indian style of Buddhism. Now I th I think that's that this is why they 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 debate. Why? Yes, what's wrong with debating? Yes, it, it's not <clears throat> um, it's not just about uh, the Buddhist debate. It's a it's the whole, it's part of the Vedic system. Part of what? The Vedic system. The Vedic system. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's a Vedic long system. tradition. Yeah, Vedic system seems to me seems to be Brahmin, not Buddhist at all. Okay, uh, it's from the Brahmanism. Uh, that's uh, the uh, the Indian uh, uh, um, the Indian uh, uh, religion that uh, was before Buddhism came 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 uh, was uh, came about. So. Excuse me. The Brahmin would debate each other, and and that's what they 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 did. But why would a Buddhist encourage the debate? This this is. It. Yeah. Now we are touching the Buddhist, uh, the the uh, the um, the uh, Indian, the Indian, uh, 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 the Indian uh, people. Yes. Orange. He issued a decree for the different school to do to have the debate. You have to debate. It's like you uh, you go you have to go to a different uh, uh, martial arts school. You go around and you prove you better. Something like that. Okay. Yes. Red. The the master of the debate tradition is a scholarly tradition. It's not a. It's certainly not from the yoga tradition, which is much more about accessing your inner wisdom. And so, the in the in the scholarly realm, they do the debating. So it's it's for sharpening your intellect, like what you referred to the Tibetans doing. Okay, it. okay. Yeah. But not but not in it's not a a wisdom cultivating practice. It's an intellect cultivating practice. Ah. Uh -huh. The uh, the yogi spoke up. It's for sharpening your wits and your tongue. It's not to help develop wisdom. That's what my problem is. <clears throat> okay, debating. Uh, ultimately does not help increase your wisdom at all. And that's why you go home and you argue with your wife and your husband. Okay? Now you see your husband is wrong. Now you see your wife is wrong. And you don't know why you were so afraid of her all these years. Okay? She's so wrong. You start debating, you start arguing. How does it help increase your wisdom? That's a problem. I always have a problem since that Bodhisattva taught me <laughs> just uh, just lower your arm, let him beat up on you. Okay, and I did. So not only did that temple beat up on me, yeah, my boss is also beat up on me. <laughs> <laughs> After that, <laughs> and bought into everything. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that that uh, the the bad things that were said about me, uh, even, even though they were, came from from uh, from jealous and and uh, ill-meaning minds. Yeah. Yes, black <clears throat> master. I, I feel like uh, I've gained more. Uh, just generally, but I guess I would say wisdom from taking a beating much more than if I've told somebody off in a really smart way. I don't gain anything from that. You get resentment, my friend. Mm -hmm. When you tell people off, they resent you. And that thing builds up to the point where it actually, you don't realize when you tell people off, you actually are hurting them. It's 
not that much different from for you give them a, you know you 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 know punching them it's not that much different it's this the difference is that this is physical this is verbal that's all so so the, the to 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 to, uh, to to give someone a tongue uh, lashing is just as damaging as to give them to beat them up physically it's not much different this only difference is this has some physical traces but the psychological pain and suffering is still there and the resentment actually is worse And if I, if it, uh, what I've learned from taking the verbal or the, you know, usually verbal uh, beatings in the workplace, uh, is to not be as afraid of it, because you realize you survive, no matter how bad it is, you can take it and you can take more. Well, uh, it's more than that. You just don't, you don't, you know, it, part of the at the workplace. Uh, you, you have to face those verbal abuses and slanders and, and maneuvering, and that's very healthy because you, if you survive it, the people who make those maneuvers actually are revealing their guards, and you're not. So you, you're at the top of the hierarchy. You don't reveal your cards until you must. You, you let them. You let them, you know, expose themselves, expose their weaknesses. And as long as, like in a war, it's defense that wins the war, okay? Uh, most of the time. Uh, because, because, because when people feel that they need to attack you and need to debate you, need to beat you up, because only because they're weak, they cannot defend themselves. That's why they have to take the offensive. to cover the lack of defense. Uh, YouTube comment. LTD says, Master, one time I took a beating from someone, a lot of beating, but there was a point where I got mad at him and told him enough is enough. Then we became friends again and I felt good about it because he was starting to think I was weak and that's why he kept doing it. But when I showed him my strength, he stopped. It didn't take much either, and he is my friend, but I endured. But I did feel I needed to fight back a little bit. That's not bad. Yeah. Next time it happens again, don't say anything. Then you have a, but even a bigger friend. When you have, you're smart, you're, intellect, you have a, you're intellectual, you have the smarts. And you definitely want to prove to others you're smarter. Yes. But if you have wisdom, then you don't want people to know at all that you have wisdom. Okay? And number two, number two reason is that uh, winning a debate makes the other party lose face and it's not good for you. You build resentment. You're hurting them. They will not forgive you. Okay? The scar here is a lot worse. If they lose the debate to you, then for you to beat them up. Trust me. Okay? Getting punched in the face, it heals. But to prove that you will have your intellect is inferior, your inferior person, that is more damaging to your image than getting punched in the face. You get punched in the face because you're the party, it's just a brute. Okay? But if you are out debated, you are inferior as a person. That's why. I don't believe in debate. I don't believe that you need to prove your superior intellect. Only 
inferior people who need to go around and prove the intellect all the time. I go to, to uh, departments of, you know, and universities and, and, uh, and uh, that's what I see. People walking around, professors walking around, waiting, looking for an opportunity to prove their superior intellect. And those are those people, they're so slow, they're so stupid. You know, I've been to so many departments, you know, I'm, I'm curious about these PhDs. I used to be scared of them, okay? I used to, because, you know, I, I went to the great schools and, and the, the top schools and, and the professors, they said, they look at us and say, you stupid. What do you have to say for yourself? I said, you're right, <laughs> I'm stupid. Compared to you, yes, I'm stupid. They're geniuses, okay? And now I'm back to those geniuses, you know, Nobel laureates. They're so stupid, so slow. Oops. No more money from Nobel, <laughs> Nobel laureates. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. I should start speaking Dharma. It's not helping our cause. Okay, so... And, 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 uh, and finally, you know, my personal penchant is not to debate and let the other people win. Uh, when they try to be, debate you, they show they're smarter than you. Great, you're smarter than me, but I'm wiser than you. That's good enough. I know I'm wiser than you. That's good enough. I don't need to show you I'm wiser than you. You want to debate, you want to prove to the world you're right, I'm wrong. Perfect. Make my day. Okay, go ahead. Make my day. You, you're right, I'm wrong. Okay? Yeah. But I'm still wiser than you. I still have more wisdom than you. Okay? Uh, you are smart, but you have to wear a mask. I'm not as smart as you are, but I don't need to wear a mask. I'm not afraid of the COVID-19. Smart people are scared of the COVID-19. I'm not as smart as you are, but I'm not afraid of COVID-19. I beat the heck out of COVID-19. Try to debate the COVID-19 and see what, what good it does to you, does for you. YouTube has a comment. Mary Jo says, Master, my practice is filled with people who have resentments over harsh words that are said to them and which keep reverberating around in their minds for years and years. Oh, yeah. Who is this person? Uh, Mary Jo. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, it, it's uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the harsh words actually hurt more than the, the fists. And, and finally, and, and finally, if, if you look at a person, you cannot tell the person's wisdom is, uh, is below yours then you don't have real wisdom yet. Hmm? The master, Master Shenhua, takes a look at, at, at me and says, oh, he's an idiot. <laughs> There's no point. <laughs> Why would you waste time debating or, you know, punching him or trying to teach him? Eh, just go away. Say your things and go away. You know? Huh? Right? And that's why, that's why the Master Shewa said, uh, you have so much wisdom, you look stupid. You have no wisdom, that's why you look so smart. <laughs> it's just so funny because all these, you know, like, uh, you know, all these uh, great debaters, I don't know, I don't care whether it's Tibetan or from this uh, 
a prestigious university, whatever, they open their mouth. I say, oh my God, you're so wrong. I don't know where to begin. To see, to, to show to you how wrong you are. So it's best I shut up. Because it's not enough time during the day, in a day, to tell you how wrong you are. Anyway, go on. It's not that, oh, he said that we are wrong, so we also say he is wrong. We don't point out others' wrongdoing. Because we don't learn from others' wrongdoing, so even if he was sabotaging us or if he was wrong, but if we sabotage him in return, we are also learning from his wrongdoing. It's just the same as him. You know, you're no different. We should learn the proper Dharma, and we should not learn, learn the deviant Dharma. So, you shouldn't think this debate is good. Agree or disagree? The point here is that don't debate, don't argue. Think about it. Not at work, not at home. Okay, when you're at work and you go into a conference and discuss uh, business matters, of course, you need to contribute different viewpoints. Uh, it's not, it's not, if you do it right, it's not a debate. It is called analyzing the problems, okay? It's, it's not arguing at all, if you do it right, and that's wisdom. And you don't, you, in particular, you avoid, since you better, since you avoid embarrassing people. Because you know you don't have to, if your boss is your superiors, are smart at all, they can notice it, they can get it right away. You don't need to point out people's weaknesses and their stupidity, okay? They do uh, themselves do uh, enough of a good job for that. You don't need to add to that, okay? Uh, but in particular, uh, in our environment, you know, we are at home, you know, don't argue. There's no point in arguing, no point in disagreeing, okay? Uh, and uh, one thing, too, is that, uh, I don't know if we should go into this, because Westerners tend to take it wrong. <sighs> Maybe we skip it. No? <laughs> you guys are not giving me any uh, room. <laughs> huh. Here's what happens. As long as you're forcing me, it's not my fault, okay? I'm not debating. <laughs> Some of you are so mean uh, that you want to corner me, okay? Uh, but mm, you see, the world has yin and yang, okay? There's men and women, okay? And for example, for women to go home and start butting heads with the husband, that's not yin at all. Or butt heads with your boyfriend. <laughs> Scary girl. You know? And, and similar in the same vein, for men, 
to cow tow to women. That's not young at all. I don't know what you are. I don't get it. You know, so so it's a natural a natural behavior, a natural thing that that uh, that that is part of nature, if you will. Okay? Women are not supposed to fight. Men are supposed to fight. Okay? Men are supposed to be dominant. Women are supposed to be, oh my God, now I'm going to be in real trouble now with all you <laughs> Western women. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I remember. <laughs> I remember your face. <laughs> okay? Uh, women are supposed to yield. Okay? Men are supposed to uh, you know, uh, be more inflexible. So if for men to be flexible, it's not macho enough. Yuck! For women to be so inflexible, it's not feminine. It's, it's, it's too unfeminine. So it, there must be a balance, you know. I'm sorry, but you, you, you chose to take on the body of a woman or take on the body of a man. So act the role. Can you imagine a play? You go to a play and you see a woman behaving like a man, a man behaving like a woman, you find it funny, don't you? Yes or no? No. You're not helping! <laughs> God! <laughs> see, everyone, look, how dare you talk? I mean, Master, he'll, he'll talk about anything. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm stupid. Huh? It, it's, it, it doesn't look right. It doesn't feel right. That's my point. Okay? So, similarly, that's, that's my, the point I'm trying to make. You go home, and all these years that you've been, you say, yes, honey, yes, honey, to your husband. All of a sudden, suddenly you come back after going, come to the temple for a few times, come back. No, you're wrong. You don't know what you're talking about. Do you know what you're talking about? You start behaving like that. That's when the husband says, where did you go? Is it what you learned at the temple? Gosh. Okay, comment. Oh, <laughs> green. Oh, this is Master Shenhua's co uh, disciple's comment. Mo, Mo, Phật Bà Thầy. Ngõ có hai người bạn nó đi một cái chùa Rồi đó thì uh, vô một cái chùa đó thì cái chùa cũng rất là tốt Thì uh, cũng nghe thầy thuyết pháp lần này kia đó thầy cũng rất là ấy Rồi cái cổ đó thì về nhà Về nhà xong đó thì chồng đó, đi làm làm rồi có khi đi chơi đi này kia Cái uh, bắt đầu bà bắt đầu uh, chửi gũa Bà nói là chồng con gì không giống ai cho nó làm xong rồi đó không về giúp gia đình mà còn đi rượu chè này kia nữa cái, cái chồng để ý hả à. mẹ sao bà đi chùa mà đi chùa rồi đó, phải từ bi mà đi chùa rồi về đó mà còn phiền não tới như vậy nữa <cười> <cười> translation uh, this helps two hundred fifty dollar <cười> Master, I have two friends that used to go to uh, go to the temple a lot and listening to uh, Dharma talk. And uh, the husband is uh, working, and then after work, they will go out and uh, drinking, hang out with friends. But the the lady, the wife, start yelling at the husband, husband saying, like, you, after work, why do you... Why do you hang out with friends and then drinking and all kind of stuff like that and complain about the husband? So the husband say, what temple have you been going? You're supposed to be more compassionate and stuff like that after you go to the temple. Why do you have so much affliction? Hai người đi một chùa, một cô đó đi nó đi với cô này hai người đi thì cái cô này đó gia đình rất là phiền não mà cổ đi chùa về đó thì cổ rất là tự bi 
không nói động tới ai hết trên đó. cái uh, gia đình đó, ủa cái bà này đi chùa tốt quá vô phiền não quá chừng mà bây giờ đi đi chùa về tới nhà không có phiền não người ta nói gì êm êm lặng gì đó thì người ta cũng chán thán được một câu mua Phật And the other lady, two of them went to the temple. So the second one went to the temple, and then the the family has a lot of affliction. But this lady, after she you know, went back from the temple, she became more compassionate and didn't say anything, didn't argue with people. So everyone was so surprised, like, oh, you went to the temple, and now you... Uh, change, you become better. Wow, that's so good. Very good. 250. 250. <laughs> that's her new nickname. <laughs> okay, YouTube comment. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I know this is not good. <laughs> In this Hurts. country, you don't, you don't, you, this is a kind of a subject you don't touch. Okay? You can't win. Go ahead. Uh, Jane says, many who attack others using words are deep in their own suffering. Once I recognize that, it helps me to be less reactive. Yes. Uh, you, you attack people verbally because you are so afflicted already. already. And that's, why, that's why you have no wisdom at all. Uh, you have no control over your wisdom. You're so afflicted. You can't help yourself. You need to release your affliction when you're afflicted. If you have wisdom, you recognize you're afflicted. You deal your affliction without having to vent your afflictions. That's called wisdom. Hey, that's a good Facebook post. You know? Those with wisdom and those without wisdom would vent their affliction, their afflictions, their frustrations. Uh, I'm running out of things to write on Facebook posts. <laughs> uh, it doesn't pay, that's why I don't care. <laughs> anyway, yeah, YouTube comment. Uh, Brady says, Master, respectfully, I think that thought is old school. Uh, <laughs> women today can be just as tough as men, and that includes in the physical realm. Wait a minute. I know this person, Brady. Is him Brady? Is our Brady? Okay, now, listen, my friend, Brady. Have you dated a young woman recently? <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about, man. <laughs> no. It's the same makeup. Yeah, yin, yin dominant being versus yang dominant being. There's for a reason. That's why they call yang dominant, yin dominant. Okay? That's why there is a balance. If you have two young, uh, uh, dominant people in a household, the household is not stable. It cannot last. So it has give and take, give and take, the yin and yang, okay? And there's always give and take. Ah. Find a younger woman, Brady, date her, and you see, it's not that much different. They only talk differently, but deep down, it's still the same. Anyone else? Okay. Yeah. However, having said all that, yin and yang and yang, yin and everything, yeah, it's not as rigid as you think. I'm not even advocating at all, that women must be submissive, that men can be dominant. I'm not even advocating that. I sometimes find that in some relationship it's better for men to be submissive. <laughs> okay? <laughs> uh, 
and women to be dominant. That's Buddhism. You're flexible, you know? Let me explain this to you in a way, a very simple way for you to understand, okay? If she's worth it, let's submit to her. <laughs> Even this old woman knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know, if it's worth it, it's not a problem. And the times were well worth it. What times? Peace and harmony in a family for the sake of children. Yes? In front of children. Yes? No? Or when she controls money. That you go home and you have to, honey, here's my paycheck. <laughs> and she said, only? <laughs> what, ha what happened? <laughs> It's less than last month. <laughs> what happened? You have a girlfriend on the side? <laughs> yeah. You know, so my point is that Buddhism is not as inflexible as you think. When we talk about dom yang dominant and yin dominant, it's, it's a general rule. But actually, as far as interaction goes, sometimes, okay, Yin has become yang dominant in order to help yang. Okay? Yang is down. Okay? So now yin has to overtake yang and help yang, give yang time to restore, to, rest to restore the balance. Same thing, you know? But sometimes yin is so yang, and yang says, oh my God, she can be that scary? That's not but heads. Let her vent. That's wisdom, folks. Wisdom is to be very flexible, not rigid at all. You always accord with conditions. But you keep in mind what the balance is, okay? YouTube comment. Uh, Apple says, sometimes I hurt my husband by words on purpose because I felt hurt by him first. I just want to fight back. Oh. Couples usually, <laughs> couples can feel the sentiment flow between them, joyful or angry. Uh, yeah, and the husband thinks, so she picked up that words from, from uh, Wei Mountain Temple. She picked up those ideas from Wei Mountain Temple that make sure she doesn't, she, she, she disconnects from Wei Mountain Temple. How are you going to win in the end? Uh, if you learn a little bit more, you know, you, you meditate more and you open your wisdom a little bit more, then you will not be as prone to dumping out, to venting your frustrations like that on anyone, let alone your poor, hard-working husband. <laughs> okay? Uh, part of, uh, and I have to disagree with that. You know, even if uh, his words, the words you hear are hurtful, whether it's from your husband or for anyone as a matter of fact, it's good for you. Because in a way, uh, you're helping them vent their frustrations, release the pressure, internal pressure from inside of them. And the, in order to do that, it hurts. It hurts others. Okay? So you need to realize that. Part of our Buddhist practice is to realize when people hurt you, when people do uh, 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 give you a tongue lashing, it's because they need to release the pressure. If you simply take it, you actually are helping them. If you understand that, then isn't it worth doing for someone you love, someone that you share your life with for a long time and hopefully for a much longer time down the road? 
It's well worth it. That's what builds relationship. That's what strengthens relationship. Not winning or losing. It's enduring. Okay? And that's the number one reason. And much more important reason is that when you deliberately choose to take a long a tongue uh, 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 whipping and uh, take a verbal abuse and take abuses, uh, and, and it hurts. Yes, I hear you, it hurts. But then recognize you hurt. Go and meditate. That's how you open your wisdom. That's the secret. If you disagree, you keep on fighting back, so, well, he's wrong, he's wrong. Yes, you can fight back, but it gets nowhere. Okay? Someone has to win. Part of wisdom is you let them win. For now. To help them. Because they can't, because losing hurts them. So you have to let them win. Does it make sense? Just like, you know, you play with children. Children love to win. You let them win. Okay? Because it makes them happier. It helps them gain confidence and all those things. So that's why, again, going back to early, we talked about I, you know, my dislike of debating. You know, winning a debate, winning an argument doesn't help our cause, doesn't help your cause, doesn't help you become a better person at all. Trust me. Doesn't help increase your wisdom at all. So that's why if you, if you think like that, you bind to that, then even a husband goes back home. When typically he always wins the argument and being the macho person, being the man of the house, and then you start beginning to yield more and more and more. And that's what will enhance your wisdom, will strengthen your relationship, make a happy household. You see that? Okay, continue. I say don't debate means we ourselves admit to our mistakes. Ah, uh, he said that we are wrong, then we are wrong. Is this lying? He says you're wrong. And we said, I agree, I'm wrong. Is that lying? I ask you. Budding, budding hats none. You want to, to train how to butt hats? Talk to her. Huh? Aren't, aren't you lying when you say, someone says, you're so wrong. You say, oh yeah, you're right. I'm so wrong. And you know you're not wrong. Is that lying? Not really? You're so dishonest. Your face will turn red and say, no, you're wrong. How dare you argue with me? You're so wrong. How dare you waste water? You're so wrong when you waste water. That's her reputation, by the way. She will be the sweetest soul to you, but as soon as you waste water, she will kill you. <laughs> Not even funny. Huh? Isn't lying, I'm asking you. Yes, Red. Pink. Master, does, does it matter if you're, if you're lying or not? 
I this mean, guy is so deviant. <laughs> does it matter we lie? Of course it, it doesn't matter we lie. Because huh? you're, you're lying to keep the, the peace for the, for the sake of, of a higher cause. That's not what I taught you. <laughs> you are twisting my words. Yes, uh, Black. I think you're, you're not lying for two reasons. Uh, reason number one, uh, that's what the person thinks. So you're saying, yes, I'm wrong from your perspective. And number two, it's more of an agreement than a lie. Absolutely. In this particular case, when you are in an argument, okay? Uh, when you are in a heated argument, when they will not listen to reason, okay? There's no point in, in beating them to death. A stupidity. You keep on butting heads. Someone has to get hurt before that stops. That's nonsense. Okay? So you might as well yield. Okay? It's not, nothing. You, you, you don't lose face yielding to your wife, in my humble opinion. Okay? Uh, but at work, if someone says, you're so wrong, okay? And you say, okay, you, 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 you're right, you're right, okay? Absolutely. You look at it from their perspective. You say, oh, you see me as totally wrong. You're so right. So you're only acknowledging. This is, this is uh, uh, communication skills 101. Yes? This is what you should speak up in, in, in corporate training. You know, you don't no longer look at yourself, you put yourself in that person's shoes and say, oh, you're so wrong from that perspective. That's all you're saying. That's what we, we train to do. Okay? You're not lying, you're not being uh, uh, two-faced. Okay? You simply say, you know, you're right. I can see why. I can see why you're thinking I'm wrong. And you point out, you point out that person's perspective. That's all you're doing. If you do that, you're not lying. That's communication skills, my friend. You don't need to butt heads. I can see why you think you don't think you're wasting water. Okay, very good. This is this is this is uh, this this these are fundamental skills you need to learn. You know, ultimately, you don't want to butt heads. Okay. Uh, and you have wisdom with more than just communication skills. There, actually, you are looking from their perspective. That's why you have more empathy. That's why you develop compassion. Ultimately, it's not simply communication skills or tricks. It helps develop compassion. If you keep, you know, you follow our path, our techniques, you have compassion. You, 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 have, you develop kindness. <sighs> Continue. Uh, we learn his right, his righteousness. So everybody needs to produce the extremely earnest and sincere mind. Yeah, the point here is that I don't know how to put it, except be blunt with you. The people of the world are so attached to being right. That's a worldly thinking. Let me repeat for you. Your world is built upon being right. Being right, most of the time, lacks compassion. The people who build the world upon being right and being better 
are miserable. Let me tell you, inside, they're miserable. They so what? What's a word? When you write all the time, what happens? Huh? Huh? What happens when you write all the time? You so what? Clearly, none of you is that smart. Black, I'm telling you, <laughs> show me how smart you are. <laughs> yeah? Well, you're very lonely. Absolutely. You're so lonely. Because you always write more right than anyone else. No one can be as right as you are. You're with someone, you're so lonely. Is it how you want to live your life? Being right and lonely? <sighs> Mom and dad never told you, did they? Huh? My mom and dad never told us, told me. So I would cry my, you know, my first half of my life trying to prove I'm right all the time. And you feel so lonely, you feel so miserable. Why? That's what happens when you insist on being at the top of the mountain. Only one can get to the top, not two. Okay? <laughs> Inferior. So who is happier? You there by yourself, and you 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 need company. You need you know kind words, and you thirst for those things, but you can't reach out because you have to be right. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't envy you. Go on. To protect and support your American Triple Jewel, I am behind you to help you do it. You should not. So, when there's an issue, don't push me forward. Now I want to promote. Promote American Buddhism, Western Buddhism. I am an Oriental. In the future, I will return to the East. Okay. And we're going to continue with our theme of offending people tonight. <laughs> uh, tell Goyin to pluck her ears, and it's going to be unpleasant. Hey, you. Old woman. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you can't take this. Uh. This is where I disagree with Master Shenhua. His entire life, I keep on hearing him that, I'm Chinese, I'll go back to China. Okay? Uh, and he actually refused to become a citizen of this country. He got his green card to stay here, but he said, I'm Chinese, I will never become American, an American citizen. So he rejecting citizenship. Why? Why? Explain that to me. I wish I could ask him that. Dear Master, don't beat me. Uh, why did you reject, you know, 
American citizenship. Why do you keep on telling yourself, I'm Chinese, I will go back to China, this is not my country. But you're here most of your time, most of your life. Why do you discriminate between Chinese and American, you know, and me and you? Why? See, see, see what I mean? I told you to plug your ears, you would not listen to me. Green. See? Sư phụ đó, thầy có cái tình nghĩa, chứ không muốn mắc cái dòng giống. Thầy thầy qua bên thương Tây này để thầy để độ chúng sanh thôi, chứ thầy không có mục đích mà ông ở đây. Translation. Um, Master, my, I think Sư Phụ is very, um, what do you call tình nghĩa? Stresses, uh, uh, stresses uh, uh, feelings. He doesn't want to hurt people's feelings. So his purpose is uh, just to come here to help, to uh, propagate. Uh, to propagate the Dharma, so he doesn't want to lose his root. But in, uh, yes, Orange, help me out to my <laughs> rescue. Master, I have a question. Are we all living beings and that's what Master is teaching, that we're supposed to help all living beings? And if we distinguish one living being, one race from another, then how can we help? everyone equally. Translate for her. Okay, let, let, let them, you know, go at it. <laughs> Ok, Green. Mô, mô Phật, tại vì thầy mình nói cái gì đó là cũng cái bằng công bằng hết. À, chỉ ai nào, tất cả ai nào cũng thành Phật hết đó. Mà một cái quan trọng nhất đó là một cái tình nghĩa nó rất là lớn. Nhưng bây giờ nè, bây giờ ai hỏi con đó, con người gì? Tôi nói là cha tôi là người Trung Quốc. Tôi là người Việt Nam, con tôi là người Mỹ, ba cái tôi cũng hòa đồng hết. Thì mình luôn luôn lúc nào đó, mình sang Việt Nam thì mình nói mình Việt Nam rồi, chứ đâu phải là nói mình Mỹ. Ba cha, cha mình người Trung Quốc thì mình nói người Trung Quốc rồi. Rồi con mình đó, sanh ở Mỹ thì mình nói là người Mỹ. Bởi vì nhiều khi con nói, ba ngoại là Việt Nam đẻ một bầy con Việt Nam, một bầy con Việt Nam đưa qua Mỹ, đưa qua Mỹ rồi đẻ, tụi tôi thì đẻ bầy Mỹ nữa con Mỹ nữa thì nó cũng hòa đồng với nhau thôi chứ không có mình không muốn phân biệt những cái gì hết trên thì có người thì muốn phân biệt mô Phật uh, Orange would you like <laughs> Master but then there's this thing called reincarnation so one life we can be Chinese another life we can be Vietnamese and another life we can be American and we can be a warm we can be anything. So if we distinguish ourselves... Yeah. Why you have to think of yourself as Chinese or American and all those things? It doesn't matter. It's just a name. It's just a label. You know, you take you take like you take a a, 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 a a fake good product from China and you put a label on Gucci. So what? It doesn't matter. My point here is that um, this is what I feel I have to disagree with my, disagree with my master. You know, I, I saw this very strong in Master Shih Hua. I says, I'm Chinese, period. I will never become American. He goes without saying. 
<laughs> he has a Chinese body. <laughs> he will never pass for an American, let's face it. Okay? It's no point. What about... Yes? What if it's to remind the younger generation not to forget their roots? Okay, let's not forget our roots. We are, you know, where we came from. We are Vietnamese, we're Chiu Chow, we're Cantonese, we are Indian, you know, uh, you name it, okay? Not for, never forget the roots. Who says you have to forget your roots? Who says you have to sacrifice your roots and become one with the rest of the world? What's number one? I don't think Master Shiva understands, really believes that what makes this country special is that there's no American. Okay? There's only red American, black American, they call it African American, okay? And sometimes, sometimes they call themselves black Americans, the yellow Americans, the Vietnamese Americans, the Korean Americans, they are so American, so so Americans. That's what America is. Okay? Let's face it. In our state of California, what is it? Are we 50% Hispanics already? Huh? That's American too. So why you have to think of yourself as I'm Chinese and you know and, and I'm gonna go back to China? It's not the point. The point here is that what I love about this country is that it's all embracing. It's a big melting pot. Yes, you will go to in the southern part of the country, you get discriminated because your skin color is different. That's part of America too. You know? That's America. No different when you go to France, you happen to be, not to be, not to be white, you know? Your skin is not white, and you, you, your ancestry is from Africa, okay? Or from, from the Middle East, Arab, uh, uh, Arabic, you know? They put you in these, uh, in these, uh, uh, these uh, high-rises for, for Arabic people only, and, you, and you're poor, and you, you know? That's France as well. You cannot say it's not France. Only the people who have no wisdom would say, I'm white. American has to be white. Okay, white is better. Yeah, I can see where you're coming from. <laughs> okay? You too. Uh, Trin says, Master Xinhua is very traditional Chinese and values loyalty to the country, so he doesn't want to change citizenship. Yes, I understand that point. But in doing that, isn't he also advocating that there's difference between, you know, China and United States, and therefore there's a Chinese Buddhism and there versus an American Buddhism? I'm gonna come here to America to give you my Chinese Buddhism. You better turn it into American Buddhism, okay? And then I go back to China. Buddhism, Buddhism has no boundaries. There's no national boundaries. In the back of my mind, Mahayana, it's not American. I call it American to differentiate from these Chinese Mahayana and they keep on promoting Chinese value system. You know, it, it should become culturally integrated into wherever it goes. That's what Buddhism is about. Yes, I understand that his loyalty and he promotes loyalty, that's fine. But to me, in doing that, it causes uh, people to become short-sighted, tunnel-visioned. So because of that, 
This here shows that his Buddhism is Chinese. Agree or disagree? Green. Disciple, Master Shanghai disciples. If you keep on saying, I'm Chinese, I'll never become American, so what you're telling your disciple is that this is Chinese Buddhism. I have a problem with that. See, 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 see. go, 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 go. Quickly, quickly. <laughs> Phật 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 giáo thì không có phân phân biệt cái những cái gì hết trên đó chúng sanh này có cái phân biệt vậy thôi. À. Yes, absolutely. But what he's doing is that Master Shiva is doing is that I'm different from you. I don't need you. I come here to do my work. And once I'm done, I go back where I came from, which he's no longer wanted, by the way. Had he come back to China, the government would said we don't want you here. You know that? He's not a communist. He doesn't like the communist system. That's why he had to run away to the United States to propagate Mahayana. And after he's done, he said, I'm going back to the East. He's not saying he's going back to China, by the way. Okay? He has no place in China anymore. I doubt he could return to China. They wouldn't want him. That's, that's number one. Number two, okay. There's the discrimination. Yes, there's loyalty. That's important. But let let me propose this for you. You you show your loyalty to Asian culture. I'm Chinese. I'm Asian. Therefore, I need to be loyal to Asian culture. Loyal to my roots. How about this for, for as an alternative? Forget about your roots. Look at what your culture did for you versus what this culture did for you. Look at what this, your country did for you versus what this country did for you. You could not do your work, your life's work, unless you depend on the support that the people in this country give you. Whereas people in your own country reject you. So far so good, that's facts. He had to run away because they, don't, they didn't want him there. So instead of saying, I'm from, from the East, I'm going back to the East, you say, I am grateful for you to allow me to be here and give me money and food and clothing and shelter for me to do my work. That I'm grateful. That enables me to be who I'm supposed to be, a patriarch. Whereas I would go back to my country, they would not allow me to be a patriarch. And they would not allow me to teach you my next generation. Okay? So I'm grateful for that. But when I have a chance, I'll go back to my country if, if I have a choice. That to me is more factual. That to me is also loyalty. Chinese people comments. I'm not saying you, you must be disloyal to the country, but it's not how you show your loyalty to your country. That's too Chinese. It creates, it, it promotes discrimination. I'm Chinese, I'm American, I'm white, I'm black. That's too much discrimination. Yes, I... I respect the loyalty. I understand where he's coming from. I'm just saying that, that to talk like that promotes discrimination. Yes, uh, uh, Pink. Master, isn't it um, when you become a monk, as a monk, you're supposed to cultivate a spirit of renunciation? So isn't that right? Shouldn't the 
be promoting like a more um, like looking beyond the it's, it's sort of a superficial route to think of yourself as identify yourself as being Chinese or so limited in that way. Absolutely, no, no matter what you say, you're still Chinese. You're still white. Okay, it's nothing you can. Nothing can change that. So that to make the point, I'm Chinese. I'm going to go back to China. I'm, I'm white. I'm going to go back to white America. It's not helpful. There's no need to discriminate. That's what I'm trying to say. That's, that's not what you want to teach the next generation. I disagree with this. No need. No need for this. It shows in your actions. You don't need to talk about it. I understand. You can't go back because you go back, you can't function. You can't do your work. I understand that. Okay? There's no need to say that I'm loyal to my, where, to my roots. There's no need. And, and on the other hand, you talk like this, you see, it discriminates. You say, you know, my mind is so, so you're Chinese. So we, we're not Chinese. How does it make me feel? Yes, orange. Master, in my opinion, if you lift this discrimination is skin deep, if you lift up your skin, we all look the same underneath. When we die, we become earth, we become dirt. So where's the root? Absolutely. It's not about the skin color or the countries. We're all living beings. We're supposed to help each other with whatever we have. Whether it's whether you went, whether you were in China or whether in in uh, in London, whether it's in New York or in Los Angeles, we give what we have. It doesn't matter. That's to me. I I I don't think it's a good way to teach about loyalty. Yes, YouTube comment. Trin says, Buddhism has no nationality, but people can have a nationality, so it's not contradictory. I'm not saying it's contradictory. I'm just saying it's not helpful. That's not a lesson in Mahayana I want to teach. If I want to teach about loyalty as a Mahayana Buddhist monk, I would not choose to verbalize it like that because it causes problems. Yes, green. Cái này là một cái lời nguyện của tất cả. Nhưng bây giờ đó mình có người ta nguyện sanh ở nước Mỹ, có người ta nguyện sanh ở Trung Quốc, có người ta nguyện sanh ở Việt Nam. Thì bây giờ đó thì nó 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 như cái người nguyện sanh ra giống ông thầy hàng thật đó. Thì mình có nghe đó là ổng là ngày xưa là ổng người Ấn Độ thì ổng nguyện sanh về Tây Phương thì bây giờ nó sanh ở thế giới này. Bây giờ mình nguyện mình sanh về cực lạc Tây Phương cực lạc A Di Đà thì mình mai mốt mình đi về chỗ đó là cái lời nguyện là rất là quan trọng nhất. Bây giờ sư phụ nó là nguyện đi uh, sanh về Trung Quốc thì ngài cũng phải về Trung Quốc rồi. Là để đi độ chúng sanh chứ cái này là cái một cái lời lời nguyện là rất là 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 tha thiết. Mô Phật. Okay, you see, that's why Republicans will always remain Republicans. <laughs> he says, whatever, I don't care what you Democrats say, I still believe you're wrong. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. I'm uh, I'm not criticizing my master at all. He's my idol. I would not criticize my idol. But I want you to understand, just because he's my idol, because he's the most wonderful 
the most incredible person I've ever met alive. And there's no, I mean, it's not, it's no point in bringing up the fact, is there any second? No one comes even close to him. He's my, uh, my idol, by far, okay? But it doesn't mean I agree with everything he says, okay? Because he's my idol, that's why uh, I would like to highlight what's so great about him, about his teachings. But there are certain things I have to disagree with him, okay? And this is one of them. Uh, well, actually, this is number two. Number one, would you like to know number one? <laughs> you all know it already. <laughs> He's mean. <laughs> A real patriarch would never be that mean. <laughs> and he says, I understand where you're coming from. <laughs> it still hurts, huh? You bet. <laughs> No, part of ad admiring someone is to be honest about it and say, yes, that's so wonderful. But also the other part, okay, I need, I feel compelled to express you my personal opinion to get back at him, of course. But, but you know, but that's part of admiring someone is that I love this. And I wish he would, you know, to me, my generation, I find misleading for him to say, I'm going to go back to the East. To me, I would prefer to hear a more positive message like, I'm grateful. Okay? Uh, no country ever gave him the kind of support, the kind of opportunities he had until he came over here. That's a fact. That's worth highlighting. Instead of saying that I'm Chinese, I'm go back to China to the East. You can't even say I'm go back to China. You see, uh, Dong Fang Chi, he's very precise. Master Xiong is very precise. He said he would not say I'm going back to China. He says I'm, I'm going to go back to Dong Fang, to the East. It's very precise. Okay. <sighs> I'm so tired. <laughs> So today is like carrying a heavy load, you know, and, and, uh, and there's so much resistance, you know, from yin and yang to, <laughs> to Chinese to, to my idol. We stop here tonight. <laughs> Thank you.